Hey everybody, thanks for watching. As you know, log files are the saving grace of all things IT. When you have a problem, the first thing you should be doing is diagnosing the problem and looking at the log files. However, log files can be complex to say the least, very verbose, uh, and there's a lot of information you have to filter through to get to exactly what it is that it is that you need to see. Fortunately, in the collaboration world, CUCM, uh, Cisco's Cube, and Expressways, we have a tool called Translator X that actually will help us process these logs and get specifically into those call details to help in troubleshooting. I'm going to show you Translator X um, firsthand and talk a little bit about how we would use it. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Without saying a whole lot more, let's dive into it. All right, so first things first, I want to introduce you to Translator X, uh, the website, uh, translatorx.org. This is it, pretty straightforward, uh, simplistic website, uh, but it gives you a quick intro and also sort of documents out the features and capabilities. So the Translator X will consume SIP traces from CUCM, um, you know, unified border element, the uh, the debug CC SIP messages, those type of messages. It looks at SIP, it looks at Skinny, uh, it'll read the logs from VCS and Expressway. Uh, really anything in your UC environment that's going to generate call tr trace logs, uh, even your ISDN and, and MGCP type messages, so on and so forth, um, you can pull that data, that log data, into Translator X and make a lot more sense of it, right? Filter it easier, get to the bottom of things much faster than you would if you parsed through uh, text files, you know, log text files uh, on their own. So anyway, check out the website. Uh, there's some screenshots there. There's uh, downloads. If you jump over to downloads, you can grab it for OS X, uh, Windows, or Linux. So all major platforms are supported. Let's grab some traces and throw them into Translator X. Here we go. All right, so to collect the logs, we're going to come into the Cisco uh, Unified Real-Time Monitoring Tool. I'm going to assume you have some familiarity with this uh, and how to collect traces and collect logs and that type of thing. Actually, a buddy of mine... Uh, Patrick has a really great video on more depth on collecting logs. So I'll put the link to that in the uh, video description and maybe at the end of this video. So check that out uh, and check out his channel altogether. Maybe give him a subscribe as well. So uh, anyway, with that out of the way, let's dive into it. Um, we're going to hit up traces and logs. We're going to look for, um, uh, da -da, let's see, collect files. Open that up. Uh, I'm going to select all servers for the call manager process. We'll hit next. We actually don't need anything here. We'll hit next again. Now you, you want to make sure you have, um, you know, the, the period of time in which you have the traces you're looking for. First of all, I'm looking to last 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to dump this on my desktop. And we'll just make a new folder, CCM call trace something like that, uh, and uh, yeah, go from there. We'll hit finish, and we'll wait for those files to be exported. All right, so here you see Translator X at its initial window as uh, right after you open it up. I'm gonna assume you guys can handle installing this application. Very easy to get installed, not going to uh, be a huge problem for you. So I'll assume you guys know how to do that. If you have questions on that, let something in the comments section will get you, get you up and running. But uh, either way, when you launch the application, you're going to see the drag and drop uh, prompt there on the screen. I'm going to take that CCM call trace folder I exported to. I'm just going to dump that whole thing right in here. So uh, let's grab that and drop it in. Boom. There it is. So you see a bunch of uh, stuff, log entries that pop up. And uh, if you take a close look, you'll start to notice some things that sound uh, familiar, right? Uh, message name from a SIP perspective, right? So protocol, direction. This is actually the direction of the message from the perspective of the device where we captured this data from. So in this case, I captured it on CUCM. If I see an in message, hey, this this notify came in to CUCM, uh, CUCM's uh, 10.100.112.11, right? So it came in from .107 uh, from a phone so uh, yeah, here it is. It consumes your, your log data. You can actually see the log entry. If you click on the, uh, the each individual 
item, you'll see the, end, the log entry show up in the window below. Talk a little bit more about that in a second. But uh, I'm going to show you a couple other things. You want to filter this data down because chances are in production you're going to have a ton of data. Uh, you can filter out uh, the Keep Alive messages, which is on by default. You can filter out SIP register and SIP options, which are also on by default. You can also clear out the subscribe, notify, and publish messages, which can also be uh, you know fairly fairly noisy. I will point out that if you have SCCP Skinny Protocol or um, you know, Q931, MGCP, you know, any type of other messages that are in your trace data, those will show up as well. You have the option to filter down, right? So if I uncheck SIP, I clear the I clear the table. That's the only thing I have in here. Let's jump back up to the top. From a filtering perspective, I can click filters and I can prune this down, right? By IP address, by protocol, by call ID, you know, you name it time, date time, all this stuff I can use to filter down if I have a ton of trace data that I need to, to, to work through. So I'm actually going to go to a different filtering mechanism called the call list, and this shows me the list of calls, right? So if I have a gazillion calls, I can just come in here and I can kind of prune it back a little bit if I know a calling party or called party info, I can, you know, get in here and I can find it easier. I actually made two calls in the lab just to, to get some data in here. So um, yeah, go ahead and uh, click on one, click view details. This will show you the CDR type um, type details. So uh, yeah, here we go. So I can look at called party number, well, the, uh, let's see here, final called party, right? Dial an E164 number from this four digit uh, extension. Uh, you can see user ID was George Washington calling uh, John Adams. So uh, these guys are uh, still still around, can't make some calls. So uh, you see device information, IP address information, so on and so forth. You can scroll down through there and get uh, plenty of uh, plenty of other details. Let's close out of that. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, generate a filter from here. I showed you the filters before. You can do that as well. So let's generate filter from that. Let's jump back and let's look at this call specifically. And let's do generate diagram. This is probably my favorite view uh, because this gives you a very graphic representation of what's going on. We see a phone on the left, a phone on the right, CUCM in the middle, and we see the flow of SIP uh, messages, right? So it starts off with an invite, actually with an SDP uh, you know, message included. You know, you see you're trying, your invite going out from CUCM to the phone, uh, inv or trying, ringing, boom, call set up, and uh, you know, see call management, and finally tear down at the end. The cool thing is you can see the timestamps along the side, right? So this whole call was, uh, what, a couple seconds? It's in my lab, you know. But uh, you can see the time it took to set up the call, right? To go from that invite to ringing, uh, you can see... The length of the call here, which was, um, you know, again, just a couple seconds. Uh, and from here, you can start troubleshooting. Hey, there was some delay in call setup. Let's dive in, check out the messages, and, uh, and figure out if there's, you know, a reason why, and, uh, and go from there. Another cool thing, each of these messages, you can actually click on, and you can see the details. So here is the, uh, the initial invite, right? I see this, this phone number is uh, dropping an invite over to... Uh, the CUCM, so uh, you know, dialed a, a plus E164 number, 717-555, nice fake number, uh, 1001, calling to um, uh, 1002, you know, the 1234 extension. Um, yeah, who, you know, caller ID from a text perspective, it's George Washington placing the call. Um, you see the rest of the invite here. And the header information, this is actually a uh, 8865 phone running 1171 making the call. You see the device information. You see some of the other capabilities and so forth that are part of this call. Um, I mentioned this has your uh, SDP info, session, session description info, that's uh, in here as well. So you can see, hey, this supports the Opus Codex, supports G722, uh, ILBC, the the Seven uh, Elevens, you know all this all this different codec info. Right in, again, all the headers 
full blown as if you took a packet capture, just cuts off the uh, the IP info and, and lower levels. And um, yeah, you're gonna see the, uh, the all the info here. It's actually gonna show you the source file that this came from as well and timestamp info, but uh, a great asset to troubleshoot with. Um, if you wanna show it in the trace, of course you can jump back and get the, uh, the, the, the full dump of info and if you need to look at entries before or after the actual trace as well to, to troubleshoot further, you can do that, right? And you see some uh, some red in there, you know, hey, what's what's going on, right? But um, this is probably more info than I am super familiar with, but uh, some of you guys may be uh, maybe a little more well-versed in the, uh, the full trace data than myself. All right, everybody, so hopefully that's given you a quick look at Translator X. I hope that's helpful in, you know, understanding how the application works and getting some ideas on how to use it in your environment. If you have questions, comments, tips, or tricks, leave them in the comments section below. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope to see you back sometime soon.